In this video, I will share with you some essential terminal commands that all developers need to know. This will act as a very fast overview of the most commonly used bash commands and ideally refresh your memory if you have some experience with bash or alternatively introduce you to some new commands. By no means do you need to be a master when using the terminal, but you do need to be able to navigate, work with files and directories, quickly search for text, and overall be comfortable with the command line tools. I'll cover all of that in this video, and if you'd like to learn even more, you can check out my course, ProgrammingExpert.io, where not only do I teach you Bash, IDEs, version control, and software design, but I also teach you fundamental and advanced programming concepts in Go and Python. That link is in the description, and with that said, let's dive in. So to start, let's briefly discuss what I mean by terminal. Now on Windows, your default terminal is going to be called Command Prompt or PowerShell, and on a Mac or Linux operating system, it's just going to be called Terminal. Now the commands I'm going to show you here are known as bash commands, and they'll work by default on a Unix based operating system like Mac and Linux. Now these commands will be very similar on Windows, but they may not work exactly as is shown if you're using command prompt or PowerShell. However, there is a piece of software called git bash, which I'll leave a download link for in the description, and this lets you use bash commands on Windows. So for this video, I'll be showing you all of these commands in git bash on my Windows operating system. Now, generally speaking, the commands you'll want to be familiar with are bash commands. So if you're a Windows user, then download git bash and stick around because you'll need to know these commands. So now that we've gone through that, let's start looking at some of these commands. So in front of me, I have git bash open. Now, the first thing you're going to want to have a look at here is the path that's being shown kind of at the top here. If you're on Mac or Linux, it's probably going to be shown to the left of where this dollar sign is. Anyways, you can see that I have my user, which is Tim, and then I have at and then this is actually the name of my computer. Now, you may or may not see this depending on the type of environment that you're in, but usually you will see a user. So this is my user and I'm at Tim Workstation because that's kind of the computer that I'm signed into. Continuing, I have Ming W64. You can ignore that, that's just because of Git Bash and how this works. And then I have the path where I'm currently located. Now, the one thing you need to understand about terminals is that you're always in a certain location. So you're going to start in what's known as the user's home folder, and that's represented by the tilde. Now, the way that we can actually view where we currently are is we can type PWD, which stands for print working directory. Now, when we do that, it's going to tell us where we are. And if you're seeing the tilde here again, that means you're in the user's home directory. Now, the home directory on Windows is going to be in your C drive users and then whatever the name of your current user is. And on Linux, it's going to be in slash home and then slash whatever the current user is on Mac. I'm not exactly sure where it is, but it's probably in a similar location to those two. Anyways, the tilde means your home directory. Now that we know that, let's have a look at how we can actually change the directory that we're currently in, because that's kind of how we navigate in the terminal. So to do this, I can type CD, which stands for change directory. Uh, followed by the directory that I want to go into. Now I know in this Tim folder that I have a desktop, so I can do something like CD and then DES. And when you hit the tab key, it will automatically complete whatever the key is or whatever the word is that you're trying to get into. So in this case, I type DES. The only thing that is there is desktop. So when I hit tab, it auto completes. And if I hit enter here, notice that my path changes. So now I'm in tilde slash and then desktop. So if I go back here with PWD, print working directory, you now see we are in desktop. Next command we can have a look at here is simply clear. This just clears the terminal. If you're working in command prompt, then CLS is actually going to clear that for you. So in your uh, bash, you're going to do clear. And if you're on Windows, it's going to be CLS if you're in command prompt or PowerShell. Continuing here, we want a way to be able to list what's currently in our directory. Now to do that, we can use the LS command. This stands for list. So if I do LS, you can see all of the different directories and files that are inside of this directory right here in this current path. Now the LS command has a few other options as well. We have LS hyphen and then we have A. Now this stands for all and it's going to show us all of the files, including hidden files. So if I do LS hyphen A, we'll get the same thing that we got before, except this time if there was any hidden folders or files, we would see those on here. Anyways, let's clear this and let's look at one more command. We have LS hyphen L. Now this is going to give us a long view or a detailed view. So when I do this, it gives me all of the same stuff that I got before, except now I have the date. These were modified or actually this might be created. I believe it's modified, though. I then get the permissions associated with this and whoever owns this directory or file. 
I'm not going to go through all of that, but that is the long view. Now you can also use this on an individual directory or file. So I can do something like LS hyphen L. And then if I put a directory here, like YouTube code, it's going to give me all of the contents of here in kind of this long view or detailed view uh, in my term. Okay, so that is the first few commands that you need to know. Those are the most common. Now we're gonna deal with actually creating directories, creating files, uh, and how you kind of you know manipulate different directories and files. So I'm inside of my desktop here, and the next command we're gonna look at is mkdir. Now this stands for make directory, and this does exactly what it says. It makes an empty directory. So for now, let's make a directory and just call this Tim. So mkdir Tim, and then let's cd into this directory. So oops, CD into and then TIM. The reason why when I hit tab here, this didn't autocomplete is because I had other directories that started with capital T. Now let's clear the screen, print the working directory, and we're inside of the directory Tim on our desktop. Okay, now that we're here, let's have a look at how we can create a file. There's multiple ways to create a file using bash commands, but the way that I like to use is touch. Now touch is a command that's just gonna create an empty file for you. So I can do something like touch, test.txt. When I do that, and now I type ls, you'll see that this file exists. Now there's multiple ways to edit this file. I'm not really going to talk about that in this video, but there is a few editors like vi, vim, nano. Uh, you have a few other ones as well, but if I do something like nano test.txt, it opens up this nano text editor and you can start actually editing the file. Again, I'm not really going to go through nano in this video. Let's just quit this though for now. Okay, clear. Okay, so that is how you make a directory and how you make a file. Now let's have a look at how you actually rename a file or move that file around. So let's just start here by creating a new directory. I'm going to say mkdir and let's just go with something like logs for now. And if I type ls, I now have my test.txt and logs. So let's now move test.txt into the logs directory. The way we do that is by using the mv command, which stands for move. Now we're just going to type the name of the file that we want to move or the path to the file. In this case, it's in the current directory. So I just put the exact name like this. If it was in a nested directory, say the logs directory, I would do something like logs slash test.txt and it would access it, access it, sorry, in the same way. Anyways, we have mv test.txt. I want to move this into the logs directory. So I type logs, I hit enter. And now when I type ls, that file has been moved into logs. So if I cd into logs and I type ls, it's inside of here and we have successfully moved the file. Now, the next thing I'll show you is how we rename a file. To rename a file, we can use the move command and we can say mv, the name of the file we want to rename, and then simply the new name that we want to change it to. Since we're in the current directory, we can just write something like tim.txt. And now what this is going to do is just move this file into the current directory. So it'll be the same directory we're currently in with a new name. And this new name is tim.txt. When I do that and I type ls, I get tim.txt. That's the same file as before. We've just renamed it. All right. So now that we've seen how to rename files, move them around, perform some basic navigation in our terminal, what I want to do is show you how we can copy files, copy directories and some more advanced commands. So first of all, let's see how we move to the parent directory. Right now I'm in logs, right? We can see that up here. We can also do PWD and we see where our current working directory is. Now, if I want to move to the parent directory of this current directory, which is simply the one that contains it, I type the following command, which is CD dot dot. Now, a single dot in bash references the current directory. Two dots in bash references the parent directory. So if I type that, it brings me back to Tim. Now that I've done that, I can type ls. We see that we have the logs directory. So let's make a new file here. Let's see how we copy the file and then how we actually copy directories as well. So to copy the file or to make a file, let's say touch. I will go with another one of test.txt and let's see how we copy this now. So to copy this, we're going to use the command CP standing for copy. I'm going to put the name of the file I want to copy and then the location and new name that I want to copy this file to. So if I wanted to copy it simply into the logs directory, I could just do logs like this and it would copy it in. But if I want to change the name of it, maybe I do something like logs and then a.txt. Now, when I run the command, if we type ls and then logs, notice that we have a.txt and tim.txt and a.txt is simply a copy of the current test.txt moved into the logs directory. That's how you perform a copy. Now let's see how we copy the logs directory itself because this is a little bit different. So let's clear the screen. So LS, we see that we have logs. Now maybe we want to move this logs directory or copy it and move it to our desktop as opposed to this TIB folder. Well, to do that, I can type CP 
and then I need to use this flag hyphen R, which stands for recursive, and you use this whenever you're trying to work with a directory. So you'll see this quite commonly, but if you get some type of error saying that you can't do something because the directory is not empty, try adding this hyphen R flag, and usually that fixes the problem for you. For now though, I'll do CP hyphen R, logs, which is what I want to copy, and then where do I want to copy it to? Well, I want to copy it to the parent directory. So I'm just going to type dot dot like this and hit enter. And now if I type CD dot dot and then I type LS, we should see that we have a directory here called logs and we do. Now, I don't know why it's giving us a capital here, uh, but let's CD into logs. Let's LS and then, oh, we actually have a bunch of logs because I already had a logs directory. So it simply took whatever was currently in my other logs directory and copied it into the existing logs directory. Not exactly the behavior I was going for. Hopefully this makes sense. So essentially I already had this directory created. And so when I tried to copy the contents of logs to my desktop, it just took all of the files from that logs directory and placed them in the existing logs directory. Interesting behavior to show you. Anyways, that is how you copy a directory. All right, so we've now had a look at a bunch of different commands. Now I want to show you how we delete files and how we delete directories. So let's go CD dot dot. Let's CD into the Tim folder again. Let's type LS. We see we have logs and test.txt. Now let's see how we would remove, say, test.txt. To do that, we're going to use the command RM standing for remove. So we're going to say RM and then test like this dot txt and that will allow us to delete this file when i type ls now the file is gone now let's see what happens if we try to do it on logs rm and then logs notice i get an error it says cannot remove logs it is a directory now to fix this we can use that flag i was talking about which is hyphen r and now that will remove the directory and now that's gone all right so there you go that is how you remove now, one important note here, some of you may have to type the command sudo before all of these commands to be able to execute them if you are not the root user or an administrator user on, say, a uh, Mac or Windows machine. So if you're getting some type of errors here, should have mentioned this earlier, but I'll throw it in now. Use the command sudo. This doesn't work on Windows because it's not really set up properly, but on Mac and Linux, the sudo command stands for super user do, and this will allow you to execute any command assuming you have the correct permission. Okay, so that is what I need to talk about there. Next, we're gonna get into a few commands that allow you to view the contents of files as well as search for different text inside of files. So the first command I'm gonna show you here is something called cat. Now this stands for concatenate and there's actually multiple different use cases for this. The use case I'm gonna show you is how you view the contents of a file, but you can actually use it to concatenate to the end of the file, to concatenate the contents of one file to another. It's a bunch of advanced usage. I'm just not gonna get into all of it in this video. Anyways, the most simple usage is to do something like cat and then put a file. Now I've just created a file. This file is called Tim is great. And when you do this, it will give you the contents of the file. So you guys can read through this and uh, agree or disagree. Anyways, continuing here, we have a, another command, which is called head. Now head is going to, by default, I believe, give you the first five or 10 lines of a file. So if I go head and then Tim is great.txt, I get all of the contents of the file. It's only five lines. If it was longer, we wouldn't see the rest of the content. But again, I forget if it's five or 10, I'll put something up on the screen that uh, that clarifies that. However, for head, we can use a, another argument here called hyphen n. We can then pass the number of lines we'd like to view and then the name of the file. So if I go head hyphen n2, Tim is great. This is going to give me the first two lines of the file. Now, that's what I get. Tim is great, as you all know. There's a bunch of other advanced usage. Again, I won't go through all of that right now. Now, just like head, we have another command here, and this is called tail. Works the exact same as head, except from the end of the file. So when I go tail hyphen n2, Tim is great. It's going to give me the last two lines of the file. So that's what I get right there. And again, by default, I believe this shows you the first five or sorry, the last five or the last 10 lines of the file. All right, so now that we have looked at those commands, the last two commands I'm going to show you have a lot of advanced use cases, and I'd recommend you look them up on your own or check out a course like Programming Expert. The first one is called grep, and what this allows you to do is search for text inside of a file. Now, the basic usage of it is very easy to understand. You can just type a string, something like grep, Tim, and then put the name of the file you want to search in. So something like Tim is great.txt, and it's going to give you all of the lines that contain this search string. However, you can use this grep command to look for regular expression patterns. You can look for all kinds of advanced stuff. You can search in directories. You don't just have to search in individual files. Again, please look this one up. There's a lot of usage. 
don't want to get into it here because this is just a quick overview. So now that we've looked at the grep command, we're going to move on to another command called find. Now find is useful for searching for files or directories within a specific location. So let me show you the usage. Again, there's a lot more advanced usage, so you can look that up on your own if you'd like. But I'm going to type find. I'm going to place the location that I want to search in. Now, if it's the current directory, notice here I'm just on my desktop, then I would type dot. But if I want to look inside of a specific directory, then I need to type actually the name of that directory. Now, I believe I have a directory called YouTube code. So let's look inside of there. Uh, and then I'm going to do hyphen name, which means I'm going to be searching based on the name of a file or of a directory. And I'm going to put a regular expression pattern here, which is going to be asterisk dot. And I will actually go with pi. Now, this is going to give me all of the .py files inside of the YouTube code, code directory. There should be quite a few, but let's hit enter here. Uh, and then it's going to give me all of the ones that I have. Currently, it's just searching because it is going to search recursively through all of the directories contained within this directory. So you see we're getting a bunch of results here. Uh, once this is done, I will be right back. OK, so it's just finished there and you can see we have a ton of different results because I have a lot of Python files inside of that directory, but it gives me all of the ones that match that filter. All right. So with that said, I think I am going to wrap it up here. Now, I know I did not go in a ton of depth about all of these commands. There's a lot more stuff that I could have covered. But if you are interested in learning more about these commands, I do have an entire tutorial series on Linux for programmers, which I will leave in the description and throw up on the screen. I also have my programming expert course, which will give you a lot more advanced usage and some more real world kind of examples and questions where you can test your knowledge. With that said, if you guys enjoyed, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in another one.